Our hymn of the week for Saturday, January the 23rd, is Sweet Hour of Prayer. The hymn dates back to the middle of the 19th century when the Reverend Thomas Salmon, who was an English congregational minister, served for four years in a church in Coles Hill in Warwickshire. While he was there, he met a blind lay preacher called William Walford, who was, in Thomas's words, a man of obscure birth and connection and no education but of strong mind and most retentive memory. William would memorise large parts of the Bible as well as the sermons that he delivered. As he composed the sermon in his mind, he would sit crafting shoehorns from bone and ornaments made of wood. And William also wrote poetry. During a visit of the two men, William asked Thomas to write down for him a poem that was in his mind. Thomas went to New York to be minister and in 1845 he sent William's poem to a weekly religious newspaper, the New York Observer. It was owned by Sidney Morse and Sidney had a number of claims to fame. One was that he was the brother of Samuel Morse, who invented the Morse code. The Sidney as well, and he also patented the flexible piston pump that we still use today. Maybe some of you weed killers have used it. All of that, and he had a hand in bringing to birth Sweet Hour of Prayer. In sending the poem to the paper, Thomas wrote, I send these lines for the observer, if you should think them worthy of preservation. Sidney Morse obviously thought they were worthy of preservation. And Sweet Hour of Prayer as a poem was in print for the first time. It wasn't until 16 years later, though, that it became a hymn set to music by our old friend William Bradbury, who also wrote the music for Jesus Loves Me. Bradbury included it in his book of Sunday School hymns called The Chain. And this was in 1861. Now, that date might not ring any bells for us, but 1861 was the year that the American Civil War began. And in fact, Bradbury himself wrote some stirring marching tunes for the Union soldiers, including Hold On Abraham, which he writes and dedicates to the President of the United States. I'm sure these songs lifted the soldiers' spirits, but how much more during the four years of the war must this hymn sweet hour of prayer, have lifted everyone's spirits to God. Sweet hour of prayer. If you think them worthy of preservation, wrote Thomas Salmon of the word sweet hour of prayer. And neither he nor William Walford, who wrote the words, would live to hear them sung as a hymn. Nor would they know how worthy of preservation the hymn would become. They would never know the seasons of distress and grief during that American Civil War, other wars, even world wars, even until the difficult time we face in so many ways now. No, they didn't know. But God did. 
For God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform, his praise to inspire and his people to bless of all generations and places. There's a phrase that says, cometh the hour, cometh the man. I think we might say, cometh the hour, cometh the hymn. And we would certainly say, cometh the hour, cometh the Lord, 